Hello and welcome to Porn and a Donut, the adult industry interview show recorded inside a donut shop. This is Sam Saturday. Uh, this week's show, as always, is being recorded inside a secret donut shop somewhere in West Hollywood. And this week my guest is Jimmy Broadway. Hey Jimmy. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming out to the donut shop. I appreciate oh. you being here. Oh, happy to do it. Great. Um, so for people who don't know you, you are the co-owner of Severe Society Films? Correct. Along with your wife, uh, Mistress D. Severe? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you guys mostly do, like, you focus on, like, like fetish production. Correct. So, um, uh, let's see. You're a director and a performer. And, okay, I looked up some of the movies you've directed. You've directed things such as Kinky Cuckold. Am I saying that right? Cuck Cuckold? Yes. Okay, I always feel like I say it wrong. Uh, Slut Bottom Chris Meets the Prostate Assassins, which is a great, great title. <laughs> and Jimmy Gets a Foot Job too, too. And I'm assuming that's You're the Jimmy. Yes. Okay. And it. there was a Jimmy Gets a Foot Job 1 as well. Right. But I saw the 2 and I was like, well, let me talk about the most recent. Right. Thing, you know? Like, it's a, but I it's a, it's a series. So. It's, is there going to be a 3 or is there already a 3? Uh, there will be a variation on a three. We recently made some changes, uh, kind of rebranded uh, as Severe Sex. Hmm. Uh, so should I not call it Severe Society Films? No, Severe, Severe Society Films still exists. Okay. We'll continue to produce uh, content uh, for digital distribution, more of the traditional fetish BDSM stuff. Uh, but we're also, with Severe Sex going into a more mainstream market oh. and taking it out of the scary dungeon and showing kind of how normal, everyday people incorporate fetish into their their lives. That's interesting. So, okay, so it's so it's like kinky sex, but it's not... In, Correct. So what, what kind of things do you do? I mean, is it like well, tamer the, stuff? Well, the first or? one in, in the series was Kinky Cuckold. Okay. Uh, it's not necessarily tamer but the settings like a lot of the stuff we did as severe society was set in you know scary dungeons and uh you know our nominated movie for this year treacherous uh was set in an underground sex and bondage club mm -hmm. so it's, it's very dark very scary very ominous and we found that that while there was definitely a market for that it a turned some people off because that's not the way they sort of envision their sex life being. Um, and it's really not realistic for a lot of people. I mean, the average couple out there, they might be kinky. They might love tying each other up and, and playing all sorts of role play games. And, and, you know, they have fetishes, but they don't go down to the dark basement and, and to do this. They do it in a nice suburban bedroom with wall to wall carpeting and. So do you find that, since you're making these changes, you find that much of your audience is, like, couples looking for, like, is it like they're looking to, for fantasy? We're, we're hoping so. Because, okay. I mean, the, the change is fairly recent. Okay. Uh, the second, the first DVD under the Severe Sex brand uh, was Kinky Cockle, uh, which is doing quite well. So what spurred this change? Oh, uh, it was a, a number of... Primarily business issues that I don't really feel like discussing. Okay. But, That's uh, fair. <laughs> but it wasn't but, like couples writing in saying like, oh, we like this, but we wish you could show us like in a in a happy bedroom or something like that. Well, like, uh, no. I mean, nobody wrote in, but uh, one of the elements to it was we did change distribution. And as part of that, we had a nice long meeting with our new distributor and discussed you know, what he thought was working, what he thought might we might do differently, and one of the things which, I mean, I think anybody in, you know, the fetish production world has to admit is Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie, that's, will be coming out. That's what I was thinking. Uh, yeah. The majority opinion is 
it's gonna suck. Right, it's probably not terribly but, realistic. And, yeah, well, it's definitely not. Yeah. If, it, if there were anything it's close to the book, book it's right. uh, not just not realistic, but uh, also unsafe and abusive. Right. That is not what a BDSM relationship, right. a healthy BDSM relationship is. Right. Uh, healthy relationships are built on consent mm-hmm. and trust. Right. And there is a... I can't comment too much on it because I got only about ten pages into the book and the writing was so horrendous that I just like... As someone who grew up reading and writing the English language, uh, I, it just made my brain hurt. I, I used to be involved with like a community of like erotica authors, so mm-hmm. I remember I was dating an erotica author when, when the Fifty Shades books you know, blew up and became big, and it seemed like the general opinion was like they're fun books and they're kind of, they're kind of tantalizing, but, but they're not realistic and they're not well written. Mm. So that that's what I, I as someone who hasn't read it, that's what I have heard. So no opinion, no opinion. Uh, I kind of share that opinion okay. actually. So. Okay. Um, so you, but so we're, oh. if you know whether you like it, don't like it. Fifty Shades is going to bring fetish and BDSM into the mainstream conversation, mm-hmm. uh, and we're hoping to capitalize on some of that. That sounds good. That movie comes out pretty soon, too, right, I think? Uh, I believe it's sometime in February. Oh, okay, so a little way. Okay. Um, so I wanted to list some of the movies that you have performed in, aside from your directing. Mm-hmm. You've performed in what I found was like hundreds of scenes over the years, because you've been doing this about ten years now, I think? Uh, nine years. Nine years, okay. Almost a decade. Which is about ten, but it's, it, Nine one is close to ten, right. So you've performed in films like Cape Fear, Triple X, um... Forced by Cuckolds, Toys in the Asshole, which is also a really great title, and Pure, um, which I wanted to mention I was also in, but not as a performer. Uh, I actually wasn't in Pure. Oh, I read that. I was the lighting director for Pure. Oh, okay. Well, what I read was that you were you were like a non-sex actor in Pure. No. no I, okay. Well, my info was wrong. <laughs> Uh, I was the lighting director and also the second camera person for the scene that you were in. Right. It was like um, this big party scene. And, yes. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a situation which was perfectly normal every so often when someone is engaging in bondage, they react to it badly. And one of our performers was having a little bit of vertigo. Did that happen that night? Yes. I'm, I totally forget. It's been like five years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we realized that in order to get through the scene, we were going to have to drastically pick up the pace. And because I directed, had directed quite a bit of that type of content, we kind of huddled with David Aaron Clark, who was the director, mm-hmm. uh, Glenn Barron, who was his cameraman, and we said... Yeah. Glenn, you've got your second camera, your backup camera here. Let's fire it up. Let's shoot this two camera. We'll get all the footage we need in half the time, and we can get her through the scene as quickly as possible. Okay. So Glenn shot all the dialogue and party cut-ins, and I shot all the fetish performance, and... That's how that scene played out. That's really interesting. I had no idea any of that was going on. Like, for, I guess, people in my position, we were just, like, party goers yeah. and just hanging out and having a good time. But there was this whole movie being filmed around us, which was, was really exciting. I thought it was really interesting because I'd only ever been on the set of, like, one other adult film before. And so that was pretty yeah, cool. It's, it's kind of a different experience. It's yeah. not as quite as glamorous as a lot of people think. No, I wasn't. Well, for me, like the one film that I art directed, um, whatever I was, no, was I, I was an art art department assistant on on one film, and um, and and it was just like work. It was just regular work. Just happened. The performers happened to be having sex in Mm -hmm. front of us, but it felt like just work in any other film production. So, um, moving on, you've been nominated for many AVN awards over the last few years. Did you, you kind of recoiled when I said when I said many. Is that not accurate? No, it's well. It, it depends on your your definition of many. Um, Is it more than ten? Yes. Okay. That seems but, like a lot. 
but there, there are people like Axel Braun who go out there and they'll get 34 nominations in a year. Okay. Uh, so, but for a, a, a small company uh, working in the fetish niche, it's we're doing pretty well with it. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought when I was like reading up on, on what you do. It seemed like you guys are successful and you, you get awards and yeah. things. Yeah, it seemed cool. Um, so let's go back in time a little bit and maybe talk about how you got started. Um, I because you were already in your forties by the time you started with this. Uh, right? I had just turned forty when we started. Okay, so was that what? What's what spurred that? I mean, oh, uh, I mean, I I've, I've been working in mainstream film and video production since I was sixteen, uh, and the concepts between a mainstream film and an adult film are the same. You're using the same equipment, you're pointing it at performers, and it's just an adult, they're wearing less clothing. Right. <laughs> and yeah. probably not expected to do quite as much dialogue. Right. That makes sense. Uh, but, I mean, if you can shoot, uh, you know, Die Hard 3, mm-hmm. you can shoot an adult movie. You Did you work on Die Hard 3? No, I didn't. Oh, it was, okay. uh, oddly enough, the first mainstream movie that came to mind. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, and I have no idea why. It's, but, but it's... I mean, making movies is making movies. Right. Uh, and we had been attending... Both my wife and I are lifestyle fetish players. We had been attending a club uh, called Passive Arts over, on the, over by the airport. And for about two years, the owner of the club had been asking me, if you ever want to come here and work, he, always, he was just really impressed with the way she, she played and thought she would do well as a, a professional dominatrix. Your wife? Yes. Okay. Uh, and she finally said, well, you know, he's been asking. and It could be fun. So she gave it a shot didn't really take that well to it just because of having to deal with the clients and not being able to choose her partners Mm. but one of the side effects was uh, the owner of the the club had made two DVDs at that point and was interested in making a third and he found out that we made movies and asked if we would do it so we produced the headmaster's office which was a American version of a Czechoslovakian hardcore caning video. Okay. Um, it was quite interesting. Where where was the idea to, to do a... Where did that come from, the idea to do a, an American version of... From, from John, the owner. Okay. It's like he had seen this video yeah. on the internet. I want to shoot that. Okay. Go, okay, we can shoot that. So we watched parts of the video and looked at stills from it. Uh, I built a stand similar to the one in the original movie in which we could place the girls and we rounded up a few people and made a movie. That's pretty cool. And he liked it, so we made a couple more and we launched a couple of clip stores for him. Mm -hmm. And after about two years of that, decided that if we were going to continue to be friends with the owner, we would no longer be able to work with him. Okay. Uh, he just was not a real good boss to work for. It wasn't like it wasn't a good working relationship. But Correct. Had, but you still had a friendship. Yeah. Okay. So we left there, went off on our own, and that was how Severe Society Films got started. Wow. Cool. And then we just started shooting our own stuff and. Right, and you guys have done tons of movies at this point, right? Uh, we've done close to 80 DVDs at this point, uh, over a thousand clips, and just keep putting it out. That's awesome. That that's really cool. Um, so, what are some of like the the fetish like fetishes that you guys like focus on for, for uh, your films? The, the ones we focus on uh, still do a lot of tickling. We, it was probably the first thing we really got into consistently. Um, Howard Stern had brought it up on one of his shows, and as a result, it just blew up. Hmm. So it's like, 
well, we can make some money doing this. And that was like his mention of it was was unrelated to you guys, correct? At that point. And it, so it just he just said it, and then you guys had yeah. the videos as and... as he does. He had you know a couple of girls. I don't know where they came from, and to be honest, I never even heard the mention. But you know, if anybody has seen his show, he just brings people in and does stuff with them, and somehow he got off on the subject of tickling, tickling. porn and. <laughs> All That's his cool. many followers yeah. decided to follow and right. check it out. And check it out. And That's, That's how the whole thing. Interesting. Um, what other what other uh, genres? Uh, not genres, but um, fetishes. Like fetishes. Yeah. Uh, we do quite a bit of strap on. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Personally, I've done a number of cuckolding scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, just works out well. My my age and my look. Uh, portraying the, the husband to many girls is an easy job. Okay. Um, and um, was it like was it scary when you when you first started like your first time on film? Was it was it scary at that point? Not or? really. No. It, it's because I started by producing, directing, mm-hmm. and then we were looking at budgets and saying, you know, if we didn't have to pay this guy. We would make more money. So I'll just do it myself. So uh, I started performing in the scenes that D was directing. Mm-hmm. Cause obviously, it's it, at that point I wasn't ready to direct stuff that I was in, uh, which I do now. But uh, and it just kind of went from there. Started off uh, would only do certain things, uh, wouldn't perform without a hood or a mask, and then just gradually evolved to where I am now. So your first movies, you, you had your face covered? Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, eventually you just got comfortable enough where you just took it off and were... Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. Nice. Um, let's take a break and talk about what you're eating. What, do you, what are you eating right now? I Oh, now you're chewing. Okay. I have a donut. It, I have a long, twisty donut with chocolate. And you... I went for a ham and cheese on a bagel sandwich. Okay. So we... We have food here. We're actually we eating do. the it's, food on the It's show. an actual working restaurant. Mm-hmm. It's a little lady behind the counter who makes things and pulls them out on the counter and pours you a nice iced tea. See, I mean, I'm assuming at this point my listeners understand that this is actually real, that we're really at a donut shop, but mm-hmm. I just wanted to double, you know, make it doubly obvious that that stuff is going on while we're here. If we're not really in a donut shop, this is... A very impressive it's set. A, it's a good your, set. Your skills as an art director are, are <laughs> very proficient. Well, I wish I could take credit for it, but I just picked the place. Um, so, do you mind if I ask you more about like coupling? Like, because I'm kind of no. curious. Is Not like, well. like I I know what it is, but I'm I mean, I I don't. I'm always curious as to like what audiences are looking for in those types of films, because I I wonder like. Who it's made for? Bless you. And like, oh, I mean, I'm I'm sure different people are getting different things out of it. Yeah. I don't know. There's the voyeuristic aspect of it. There's the humiliation aspect of it. There is the pleasing your wife or making sure your wife is happy aspect of it. Okay. Uh, and you know, if you ask different people that were that watched it, they would be watching for different reasons. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, do you ever hear from fans and viewers, like, what, what it is that they want to see? Oh, uh, yeah, from time to time. Uh, some of the companies that I work for, other companies I work for, um, have given me access to their message boards on their website, so I get to go in there and interact with the fans and see what the, they like, what they don't like. And it's, like I said, everybody seems to be into a slightly different version of it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I guess, I don't know, well, let me see. We're actually coming up close to the, to the end of my time here, the end of the time I've got available. Oh, okay. um, Is there anything that you would like to uh, plug or let people know is coming up? Oh, let's see. Coming up, uh, new from Severe Sex, uh, is Kink School. Kink 
King School. It, okay. Which is an educational line. Mm -hmm. So if you've seen the Fifty Shades movie or read the book and said, hey, I want to try that, we have uh, an introduction to basic BDSM that you can sample. Okay. It'll teach you the proper way to do it safely and enjoyably. Uh, one of your previous guests, uh, Tim Woodman, mm -hmm. is one of our instructors. Right. So he'll, okay. he'll show you how to tie people up mm -hmm. and not hurt them. I noticed that another one of my previous guests I had was was one of your performers. I had Nikki Nefarious on here oh, a couple weeks yes. ago. It's, so it's been a while since we've seen Nikki. Well, maybe maybe now is the time to yeah. bring her back. Yeah. Now that everything is blowing up because porn in a donut is making everything so exciting. Anyway, I'm just tooting my own horn now. Um, so okay, so you got the King School. The videos. King School. Line. Okay. And um, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, the easiest way is on Twitter, at Fetish Director. Uh, I'm also on FetLife, at Fetish Director. Okay. Try and keep it simple. Right. Uh, it's hard to remember too many different names, so. So, but so you just go with Fetish Director. Okay. Yes. Got it. Um, well, let me see. And if you don't have anything else, then I don't have anything else. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh... You can follow me, at, follow Jimmy on Twitter at Fetish Director. You can follow me on Twitter at Sam underscore Saturday. And you can see pictures of Jimmy with the donuts on my Instagram, which is under This Is Sam Saturday. And that is also my Facebook, This Is Sam Saturday. Um, the show website is pornandadonut.com. And you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. And um, if you like the show, please leave a nice rating. That would be really, really awesome if you did that. Um, well, thanks a lot, Jimmy Broadway. I appreciate you being here. It was my pleasure. Maybe I'll see you again at another uh, shoot or something later on in the future. Uh, or maybe just around donuts. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Um, so, for once again, for uh, myself and Jimmy Broadway, this has been Porn and a Donut. Thanks for listening, and uh, have a lovely, lovely week. And we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>